Hi there, it's Meg here. It's winter here on Wurundjeri country in Southeast Australia and I am planning my veggie patch for spring and summer. I want to share with you what I'm planning to grow this coming growing season. I do want to encourage you that if you're growing in a small space, that shouldn't be a limit to trying to grow some of your own food or even a lot of your own food. Um, and I'll share some tips that I've used um, when growing in small spaces and some tips for feeding a house of one or two people. In my courtyard garden last year, I had two raised container beds that were a meter squared each and I had a meter squared plot at my community garden and I had lots and lots of pots in my courtyard as well. So that goes to show you don't need heaps of space. Um, you can grow food and meaningfully supplement your diet in a courtyard um, or in a balcony, whatever small space you have. Um, particularly if you're lucky enough to have a lot of sunshine. So it might seem strange to be thinking about seeds for spring and summer in the middle of winter, but um, I'll be starting seeds in August. It's currently July here. It is the middle of winter, but um, it's good to get your seed orders in early um, so that your seeds arrive in time to start um, to start growing in uh, in you know late winter, early spring. So I'm going to start with tomatoes, everybody's favourite. I do have one friend who doesn't like tomatoes and I said to him, well it's just because you haven't had a homegrown tomato and he said, well homegrown tomato just tastes more like a tomato so it's even worse. Um, but for tomato lovers you know that homegrown tomatoes just taste like nothing else and I live off them in summer. So there are a few kinds of tomatoes, cherry tomatoes which are little sort of snacky tomatoes. Um, they're sometimes also called salad tomatoes. There are sourcing tomatoes which have a lower um, liquid content and they're more sort of pulpy and they're good for making sauces and passata um, relishes, that kind of thing. And then there's slicing tomatoes or beefsteak tomatoes which are the really kind of big um, chunky juicy tomatoes that you might just put straight on a sandwich or in your hamburger in one slice. So I get my seeds from a few places. One place is the Diggers Club this is their heirloom seed annual catalog and the thing that I love well, one of the things that I love about this catalog is that their centerfold is just juicy delicious tomatoes mm. so this year from diggers I'm growing a couple of new things that I haven't grown before I'm growing a couple of cherry tomatoes here Barry's crazy cherry which is supposed to be prolific and really sweet and juicy um, and this pink bumblebee cherry which has a kind of pink and red striped skin it looks really beautiful one that I grew from diggers last year um, was the sugar baby cherry tomato which I've saved some seeds off here that was really sweet and delicious and the mini Amish the mini Amish is a good option as diggers says in their catalog um, it's a good option if you don't have a lot of space, if you've only got room for a couple or one tomato plant, um, because it is a sourcing tomato. It's a miniature version of their Amish paste tomato, but it's small, so you can use it as either a cherry tomato or a sourcing tomato or a salad tomato, whatever you like. I'm also growing from um, Grow Heirloom Seeds. I'm growing a black crim growing a black crim tomato, um, which looks like this one here, which looks like that one there. Diggers have it in their catalog as well. Um, and black tomatoes have a lovely smoky um, kind of flavor. So I should have room for more tomato plants than I've ever grown before, which is exciting because I love tomatoes. Um, I love eating them fresh in summer. I love having passata um, in winter. Um, to put in everything so yeah definitely one of my favorite veggies and I'll be growing a lot of them next up is eggplant or aubergine I didn't used to like eggplant because I've been a vegetarian since I was a teenager and eggplant is this vegetable that uh, non vegetarians seems seem to think replaces meat in any dish so you get weird things like eggplant parmigiana or eggplant lasagna or you might just get a 
slice of fried eggplant on your plate with a bunch of other things. Um, and generally speaking, I find that um, meat eaters don't know how to prepare eggplant so that it's tasty and so you get these kind of strange things. Um, no shade on anyone who's fed me an eggplant in the last 15 years. But of course eggplant can be delicious if you prepare it properly. And the last couple of summers I've really taken the time to learn some eggplant recipes um, and make them more tasty. Things like sweet and sour eggplant um, or frying it up with tomatoes and bread to make a kind of uh, like a fried panzanella with balsamic and herbs and stuff, really delicious. So you definitely can make eggplants taste good, especially if you've got homegrown or maybe eggplants from a, a local farmer. So this year I'm growing two vines. Um, the first one I grew from a digger seed last year. This is the Violetta di Firenze. We're gonna focus, there we go. Um, and this is a really beautiful little eggplant. With a gorgeous dark purple uh, skin and really pale flesh inside. Um, and it's really sweet and uh, yeah, it's really, it's just a beautiful, beautiful vegetable. Um, they're quite small. They don't grow very big. Um, one thing that I like to do as a single person household is to grow varieties that produce smaller fruits um, for things like eggplant and capsicum, um, zucchini, cucumbers. I like to either grow small varieties or pick them before they get too big because um, I just know I'm not going to be able to get through a whole massive eggplant in one or two meals. Um, so growing smaller ones helps me to avoid wasting food that I've grown. The other one that I'm, the other eggplant that I'm growing this year is the Slim Jim, which is this one here. So that produces um, these sort of long, quite again quite small fruits. Um, I didn't think they were as delicious as the Violetta di Firenze, but I found that the plant didn't get sick as quickly as the, the Violetta di Firenze did last year. So I've saved the seeds from my best eggplant from last year and um, I'll be growing that again this year as well. It also, I got more of them later into the season, so I was still eating them in autumn. Um, whereas the Violetta di Firenze kind of gave up the ghost pretty early on. Okay, capsicums and chilies. So I'm growing quite a few new ones this year. I don't have a lot of experience growing chilies or capsicums, um, peppers of any kind. Last year was the first year that I grew them, I think, or I might have grown chilies once before. I grew last year these little ones from Diggers, Alma Paprika. Um, they're just small and sweet and fleshy. They're really delicious. Um, and again, they're a smaller fruit. So I found that I got many small fruits, which was great. But I just needed one or two for a sandwich or something like that. And I'm growing two other capsicum from Diggers this year. The Gilboa Orange and the Sweet Chocolate. And I wish I could say that there was a good reason for growing them, but really I just like to have variety of colour on my plate or in my salad. It makes it fun. That's one of the joyful things about growing your own food is the kind of the colour and variety that you can get. For chilies, I'll eat them fresh and also preserve them. So this year I'm growing, again from Diggers, um, the early jalapeno and the red cap mushroom. So a green and a red, both pretty mild. I'm also going to be growing some uh, cayenne chilies from Save Seeds. I hope I've still got them in here somewhere. Um, which on my home save packet, it just says long red chili. And then in brackets, cayenne. Because um, I actually am not certain that's cayenne. It looks like a cayenne chili. Um, I saved those seeds originally from um, some chilies that I picked up from a kind of street stall. Somebody um, had excess produce they just had out by their mailbox for passers-by to take. So 
Um, I took some chilies from there and saved the seeds and grew them again um, the next year, which was last year. And they were great. So I'll grow them again this year from Save Seed. Another thing that I didn't used to enjoy was cucumber. But I think that was because I was eating cucumbers from the supermarket. And cucumbers are just one of those things that don't really store or travel that well. So you kind of want to eat them as fresh as you can when they're sweet. And um, generally I would pick them a bit smaller than the ones that you get at the supermarket. They tend to, you tend to get these kind of massive cucumbers at the supermarket, um, but they're sweetest and crunchiest and best when they're a bit smaller. So what I'm growing this year, I'm growing one variety for um, pickling and one variety for eating fresh. So these are some seeds, again, grow heirloom seeds. I picked up this seed packet um, in a little town that I've forgotten the name of in Southwest Gippsland. And there was a shop that had a bunch of heirloom seed packets, so I picked these up. Um, and yeah, good for picking like really small, like five centimeters for like more like gherkins, I guess, um, or growing them out a bit bigger and then slicing or still pickling whole. And then the other one that I'm growing is again, a diggers one, um, but I have seen it from other seed companies as well, is this one, can you see, which is the lemon cucumber. So I'm growing that one to eat fresh because um, it sounds amazing. Apparently it tastes lemony. Next up, I'm growing two varieties of zucchini. Um, I'm growing, I'm growing my zucchini from seeds from the seed collection. Um, the seed collection is another seed company that has a really great variety of heirloom seeds. The seeds do come in these little plastic packets, which I find a little bit annoying because they're hard to reseal. And then you just have these plastic packets that you need to dispose of. Um, so generally I prefer to buy seeds in paper packets. But the seed collection, they do have a really good variety and they generally have fewer seeds in a packet. So the packets themselves are cheaper, which is fine for me because I'm not growing dozens and dozens of plants of anything. I'm generally just growing one to four plants of some of these kind of summer fruiting crops. So the zucchinis that I'm growing for them, I don't have pictures, but um, I'll describe them. I'm growing a green one called Cocozele, um, which is kind of striped. So it's got pale green and dark green stripes. And I'm growing a golden zucchini, which is just bright yellow. Um, they're both supposed to taste great, but again, I'm kind of growing them because I like the way they look. I haven't grown either of them before, um, but I have grown zucchinis in the past. I didn't grow them last year and apparently people in Melbourne had a really bad year with zucchinis last year so I'm glad that I, I didn't grow them last year but hopefully we'll have a better year for zucchini this year. For pumpkins I'm growing two varieties of pumpkin this year. Um, the first one is the small sugar from the seed collection. I haven't eaten them before and haven't grown them before but the reason I chose them is that um, they are a smaller pumpkin and they're supposed to be really sweet so great for soups and roasting and I mean everything you just want your pumpkins to be sweet don't you um, and it's called small sugar so I assume it's going to be really sweet that one's got a, a kind of bright orange skin um, the other one that I'm growing which is from diggers is buttercup which has this um, really dark green skin and I had a, a buttercup from somebody at the farmer's market a couple of weeks ago and it was so delicious and it was just such a beautiful pumpkin with that dark green skin. So pumpkins, if you don't know, you grow them over summer. They take a, quite a long time to mature so you, they're kind of in the ground all summer and then you store them to eat in autumn and winter. So I think having the two varieties, a bright orange one and a dark green, you know, stored and sitting together somewhere in my kitchen if I can find room, um, will just look good and they're both supposed to be really sweet and tasty, so that's great. Staying in the cucurbit or squash family, so zucchinis and pumpkins, they're all part of the same family. And the other plant that is in the um, cucurbit or squash family 
uh, melons. So last year, again from Digger's Club, this is not sponsored at all. I just really like Digger's Club seeds. <laughs> Um, and I'm a member, so I get a discount. Um, last year from Diggers, I grew what's called a golden midget watermelon. And I'm not sure that that is a kind of politically correct name. So I was just calling them little golden watermelons. Um, but if you look them up on the website, they're called golden midget. And I grew them last year and I noticed they're not in the seed catalogue this year. Maybe they still got them online, I don't know. Um, so I'm really glad that I saved seeds from last year so I can grow it again this year. It grew these beautiful, quite small watermelons that go, the skin goes golden when it's ripe and inside it's just beautiful and um, juicy pink flesh. Um, it wasn't very sweet, but I think that's because it was the first time I've grown watermelons. I was growing it in a pot, which is not great for melons. And there's a trick to watering watermelons so that so that you concentrate the juice before you harvest it. So you kind of stop watering it um, a few days before you harvest it, which I didn't know until after I ate it and thought, hmm, I wonder why that wasn't sweeter. And then went and did some research about growing watermelons. But that one is another one that is one that I grow because it's small. Um, I love watermelons, but I just never managed to get through even like a quarter or a half watermelon on my own before it starts to go mushy. So ones that I can eat on my own or share with um, one or two other people is perfect. The other one that I'm growing this year, which is a big one, is the cream of Saskatchewan. And I'm sure I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. And if there's any Americans watching that, you, watching this, you can correct me. Um, so it's a watermelon, but it's got a kind of pale green. The catalog describes it as champagne colored. Um, flesh inside and it's supposed to be sweet and juicy. So corn this year I'm growing two varieties um, again from the seed collection. I'm growing a maize corn or a corn that you leave to dry uh, on the stalk and then you, um, you store the kernels and you can use them um, for flour if you're lucky enough to have a, a grinder um, <laughs> or a mill to grind the flour. Um, or you can store them to use as popcorn, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm growing the glass gem corn, which, which is a really popular one, or it's become popular recently. Um, and I wasn't able to get any seeds of it last year, but I really wanted to grow a beautiful multicolored corn. So I tried to grow painted mountain corn, but I just didn't really have much success growing that either from started seeds sown indoors or sown direct. They just didn't really um, take off for me and I didn't get any corn from them. And the other corn that I'm going to grow is a sweet corn, which is the corn that um, you just eat fresh. Um, so I'm growing one called Jolly Roger, um, which is, again, supposed to be nice, sweet, juicy. Um, you get, I think, two or three cobs per plant, whereas some sweet corn, you only get one cob per plant. So if you don't have a lot of space and you want to grow corn, um, look for varieties where you'll get multiple cobs per plant. Um, and last but not least for veggies is beans. I haven't grown a lot of beans in the past, um, but I am trying to grow more of them because as I mentioned, I am vegetarian or mostly vegetarian. I wanna try and find more protein sources that are grown locally. So I'm gonna try growing some of my own beans this year, um, both to eat fresh and to store. Um, so that I've just got a little bit more locally sourced protein in my diet. So the first one that I'm growing is the tiger's eye bean, again from Diggers. Looks cool, doesn't it? Um, so apparently that one's a really good one for um, putting in stews and soups and uh, baked beans and that kind of thing. The other one that I'm growing is bolotti which is a pretty classic one. Um, I got the bolotti seeds from diggers last year and saved them. So I've got both saved seeds from last year and the seed packet from the year before. So actually it'll be interesting to see whether last year's saved seeds or the year before's seeds directly from the seed company 
do better. I'll be interested to see. I'm also growing some for fresh eating. Growing a climbing bean called Blue Lake. So that's a kind of purple bean. And um, another one that I can't remember the name of, but is a green bean. And yeah, again, growing um, different colored varieties just because I think they look great on the plate. And one tip that um, Diggers does give is if you're low on space to grow bush bean varieties um, because they grow well in a pot, whereas other varieties of beans are climbing beans and they need to go up a trellis. So if, you're, if you are growing beans, just make sure you know whether you've got bush beans or climbing beans and that you've got the right space for climbing beans um, if you are growing them. Um, but growing climbing things can actually be a space saver because it allows you to grow up and not just stay kind of on the one horizontal level. So if you're growing in a small space, planting some vertical growing things is actually a really good idea as well. So that's everything that I'm growing or a lot of what I'm growing uh, this coming growing season. Um, last year I started my seeds on the 1st of August, or I started starting my seeds on the 1st of August. Um, I was in Melbourne though and my garden had a pretty warm microclimate so I knew that I was going to be able to plant things out in mid-September and it would be fine, which is what I did. Um, I have moved to a cooler climate recently though so I'll probably be starting them a little later in August and into September for planting out in September, October um, and November. Hopefully we won't get any frosts here that late and that's the thing that you kind of want to um, know is whether or not you're going to get frosts in spring because that determines when you plant out your summer veggies. So that's it. I know this is kind of a long video. Hopefully it was interesting. Um, if you do have any questions, please ask them in the comments. Um, and I'd love to know what you're growing or what you're looking forward to growing this year. Or if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, what you're currently growing. Um, you can recommend anything um, to us in the Southern Hemisphere for the coming season. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find me on Instagram at Meg underscore Makes and Grows. And if you're watching this on Instagram, um, I also have a YouTube channel. So you can find me at Meg Makes and Grows there as well. Okay, bye.